Hello, it's Jimmy here at O'Reilly's. I'm looking at a Ford Focus. So, looking at this engine uh, 1.6. Okay, so inside the car there we have engine management light on. Using my launch Eurotab 3 scan tool, doing a scan here. You can see we've got a code here for particle filter trap differential pressure sensor circuit. Now that's already been changed, so we need to look at what's going on. Um, let's go to some live data. Uh, data stream. Search for the differential pressure, there it is. We've already ticked it. So we have 19.9 .9 if we accelerate the vehicle up. You can see there it doesn't move. Okay, so we've got a multimeter ready. Um, sensor is right there. You can see it's already been replaced. Hoping this is going to be pretty straightforward. Um, try and get it connected on there for inert. Just take off the battery case and I'll confirm that we're getting voltage. Yep. So we'll come back over to the sensor here. Get that unplugged. Make sure the plugs look okay. So left pin, we got sort of two volts. Far right pin. 5 volts, which is normal. Now if we reverse these cables, um, check the middle pin for inert. See there, we've got minus 14, so we got inert. Okay, so I'm going to switch the engine off. I mean, so to me that just looks like the new sensor is also faulty, so i um, got another sensor here, I'll try and put that on. So we've got a digital manometer onto the gauge, onto the DPF there, we've got sort of 8 millibars at idle. 3000 RPM. Got 115, 120. Okay, so this sensor we've got in the van doesn't fit the car, so we're going to have to go and get one and then come back. Okay, so the customer just told me that this wiring harness has already been replaced as well. Um, so he's taken up that's been removed from a, from another car and put into this. So we're going to take off the sensor now. I've got a new one here from Beckerman. Part number there, on it, is it? So we'll get this open and we get it fitted on. Okay, so we've got that plugged in. We've got both of the hoses there plugged in at the bottom. If we have a look at the old sensor, you'll see one tube is slightly smaller than the other. So this is the side that goes before the DPF, and this is the side that goes after. You can see he's already changed the hoses there, some bright coloured ones, just to identify them. Okay, we are now back in the vehicle. I'm going to check in special functions to see if the differential pressure sensor has a, a reset for it. Injector, air throttle, particle filter, learn values. No. Nope. So we'll just go back to data stream. I don't know if it'll still be clicked. No, nope. there it is. Okay, we'll get that switched over to HPA. And let's start the car up. Well, that's it. Sensor is now working. That's all it was, really. Very simple. Seems like he's been been going through a uh, a twelve months process for absolutely not a much of a reason, really, other than a, a faulty sensor. Hold it up to three thousand RPM. It's giving a slightly less reading than it is on the manometer there. 
would be nice if we could uh, adapt it in. But uh, the sensors do usually take a little bit of time just to um, to adapt into the car. So I can see now the car is smoking heavily. So it looks like it started doing its own regen now. Okay, we are now on 17.9 HPAs at idle, so it's increased a little bit, but it looks like the car has started doing its own region, so what I'm going to do is take it on a test drive. We can see there that the temperature now of the DPF is quickly increasing. See that's going to increase up to 600 degrees. And I think it's just about coming back down now. Okay, we're back from a test drive. Idle DPF pressure is idling at there, according to the sensor. We'll hold the revs up to 3000 RPM. So it seems like its sensor is a little bit slow. We're there, 58, it's slowly increasing. Accelerator. Not sure if that's the center or just a car to be honest. It just takes its time to move up and down with the revs. It's a little bit of a delay. Other thing I can point out on this is the coolant temperature. There it doesn't seem to go above sort of 80 degrees. Now I've had that on one of these cars before and apparently the uh, Customer said he looked on the forums and it's pretty normal for these cars. So we're gonna leave it at that. So just it doesn't, it doesn't burn oil. Just put the sensor back where it needs to be. The car seems underpowered to me, very very underpowered at low revs. Um like it's struggling for either fuel or air. He said it's out of service though. The fuel filter doesn't maybe, look maybe really the, uh, the, um, the vines on the turbo, would it? I can see there the there, there is a the leak minus. on the turbo. service. Um, air filters done about six months ago. Fuel filters been changed recently. Yep. Um, all, yeah, all filters been changed. We should wash one. I don't know if it's shitty ones. Let's get these open. I've seen so many of these air filters collapsing like I showed on one, video, one recently. So this screw down here it's just spinning, it doesn't want to open. Um, so, we're a little bit stuck on getting this open. So I've managed to just pull it out. It's kind of, you can see why it's spinning. Someone's put tape on it. Right. Um, but, that filter definitely hasn't been serviced. Right. Not in many, many years. Okay. You can see it's this forming the shape. Right. It's curving. Sorry, sorry. I mean, see the shape. I'll get another one on. The shape's one. curving. I'll get another one. There. I'm not sure if you can sort of see that on the video, but the filter is literally rock solid. It feels like it's not even made of paper anymore. Okay, so that's it. It's going to get a filter on his way home. He said, and uh, that'll be it. We're all done.